Goregri Mogisha Muntu Oyera, born to Eno Kruzima Muntu Oyera and Aida Matama Muntu Oyera, to Chitunga Village, present day Ntungomo District, has served in the Uganda People Defense Forces and is a Ugandan politician, a flag bearer, and president of Ant. We have him today in studio, and uh, we're going to be casting an eye on Uganda's politics, democracy, but also does Uganda's opposition still hold water? You're welcome to the STV studios. Thank you. Major General. Thank you. Uh, to start with, we're going to be discussing quite a number of issues, but why are you a gentleman in a confused political environment full of intrigue, backstabbing, and all sorts of things going on? Why are you a gentleman? Well, I practice what I desire to see happen in our society. Because um, we should live in an environment where people live in a state of harmony. Because we are not animals. <laughs> I mean, when you go like in a national park, you find a situation where the most fierce animals would attack the vulnerable ones. Yes. Society is not supposed to be like that. Society is supposed to be governed by rules and regulations and, and laws. Mm. Because if society is left to those who have got the capacity to oppress others to do whatever they want to do, then that society can't be stable. Because the, the stability and, and peace within a country, within any society, is dependent on justice. And therefore, those of us who have gone through uh, challenges and have been part of those who try to offer solutions need to recognize that and therefore practice what we want to see happen. We don't want, it, it, it doesn't make sense for you to say things and then act in a way that is contrary to the things that you desire to uh, see. Absolutely. So it's, it's through practice that... Uh, Gen General Muntu, however much I admire you and your political career, but also a servant in the Uganda People's Defense Forces, having been the longest commander of the, of the army uh, that is known in Uganda, um, I will not go easy on you. I'll ask <laughs> you the hard questions. Uh, yeah. The fact that your approach is... Um, that's your role as a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The fact that your approach is a gentleman's approach yeah, yeah. in the environment that we live in today. Yeah. Uh, do you, would you say that you are misunderstood uh, by many people, not only in the opposition, but uh, also in the ruling party? Uh, the fact that uh, in the ruling party they would interpret you as um, an opposition politician mm -hmm. who has systems, and therefore you are considered a politician in the opposition but trusted with your systems, mm -hmm. and yet in the opposition, they look at you as um, someone who is double-sided. It is the nature of our politics, because in the last 58 years, we've had the politics of deception, mm -hmm. and intrigue, and, and blackmail. It's as if anything goes in politics. However, in, in life, actually in any society, you'll find that people who are in politics are driven by two things. Some are conscious of it, others are unconscious of it, even generally in society. There are two philosophies. One is that the end justifies the means. Absolutely. The other philosophy is that the process is as important as the end state. Yeah. So some of us are focusing not only just taking power, power is not an end in itself, but to ensure that once you are in power, then you can use power to change the culture of politics. How, how Currently, the culture of politics is that you can do anything in politics. How as long you as you survive and as long as you reach your main objective. So the end justifies the means. We don't believe in that. Absolutely, the end justifies the means. Yeah. We don't how believe do in the end justifies the means philosophy. We don't. I don't. I don't subscribe to that. <laughs> how do you define Uganda's uh, uh, democratic trajectory as of today? How do you define it? It's built on a very weak foundation. Still, the constitution that was uh, promulgated in uh, 1995 mm -hmm. was a good constitution. But there are two, two key elements that have been uh, um, knocked out of it. The amendments which were done, 
uh, the one removing the term limits and the last one uh, removing the age limit, that creates a state of uncertainty. And it more or less removes uh, the main uh, uh, safety valves that were in build. And, and, and right now, there's uncertainty as to whether we'll have a smooth transition, whether the transition could be turbulent, and therefore that affects the process of democratization that we've been undergoing for quite a long time. So yes, there are some uh, advances that have been made in the last 58 years, but the foundation has been weakened now. And therefore, until we get a smooth transition, and in any case right now, if we are able to get uh, uh, one leader leaving power and handing over peacefully to another, then we would have uh, more or less made a significant step that we've never had in this country for the last 58 years, because we've never had any president handing over to another. That's a key factor in the stability of politics in any country. We have not experienced it. We hope we will be able to. Would you then conclude that you're witnessing a manifestation of the exact issues that you went for the bush to, to fight? Absolutely. I mean, for the last 58 years, politics has been rife with, uh, as I've already indicated, with the deception, with the blackmail, with uh, the use of power in its raw form. Mm. That's what causes the injustices and the unfairness we see. And that's what we are trying to tackle. That's what we are trying to change, at least as a lens for national transformation. Mm. We recognize that, one, where it is important to remove the main roadblock, which is uh, Genome 7 and the NRM, that we ourselves must prepare ourselves to do different. Yes. Because if we take power when we are not uh, fully prepared, we're coordinated and ensuring that when we go there, we will be different. Mm. Then we'll remain part of the vicious cycle that we've been going through for the last 58 years. Mm. So there are two key, thi two key things that we need to look at. Removal of the regime, but also changing the nature of politics in this country. Mm. That's the challenge for all of us who are in the opposition. Because at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to be judged by just simply removing a regime. We're going to be judged by how we exercise uh, power thereafter. Does that mean that Uganda's <clears throat> political style is dirty politics? Unfortunately, that's what it is as we speak. Mm. Yeah. So, so if it is dirty politics, I'll move on from uh, your approach yes. to uh, something a little bit different. Yes. There's a new wave of um, young people who want to... Um, to be given power, if not by peaceful means, uh, grab the power from the old guns. Yes. Uh, precisely to say, you, uh, General mm -hmm. Yoweri Museveni, yes. um, um, we have um, Dr. Kiza Besige, retired Kano, uh, who have been in the rim of uh, the Uganda's politics and the control of politics. Uh, young people want to see their faces represented. Uh, and that's the reason you would see yes. Honorable Chagulani if yes. he stood in, in, in this town on, on the Silbu Ziga, yes. uh, people would gather around him. Yes. Have you felt pressure as the old guards no, no, from the young no, people? I, I don't feel any pressure whatsoever no. because I'm always focused on the things that I think uh, need to be done. I never bother so much about whatever anybody else is doing. Two, I can never discourage anybody who chooses whatever method they want to use. One because we've uh, ourselves uh, uh, taken the most extreme measures in the past. I mean, we took weapons and we fought a uh, sitting regime. So there's no way I would want to condemn anybody who uses whatever method they, they want to use. Mm. But the most critical thing is whatever methods anybody tries to use, the issue is uh, when you use whatever methods you use and you're able to take power, mm. it is how you manage power that becomes critical in as far as I'm concerned. Mm. And, and age is, is, I don't see any problem with age because the statistics indicate that the youngest, we have the youngest population, in, more or less, on this continent. And uh, I think uh, under 35, about 75%. Yes, which is okay because one, it means that there's a, a, a vibrancy within that uh, population. We are talking about the, the, the young people who are... Yes are faced with the most harsh situations yes, of life, yes, they're the most yes, unemployed, yes. Uh, they're, they're the poorest, yes. uh, the levels of uh, education yes. are questionable. Yes. Uh, these are people that feel that, like they have been disenfranchised yes. in a certain way. And, and, and it's understandable. Mm. And we encourage the young people to participate fully and actively in uh, shaping the future. Because, you know, 
75% of the population, that's huge. Yes. Therefore, they need to use those numbers to change the nature of politics, mm. to participate in shaping the future. Mm. However, the only caution I normally raise is that age is not uh, the main factor alone on its own. Because history itself has shown us that that is not necessarily the, 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 the most critical factor in, 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 in governance. I mean, we saw in 1962, for example, the first prime minister, the first president of this country, both. One was 36, another one was uh, uh, 35. The, 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 the first president was uh, the late uh, C. Kawaka Mutesa, and the prime minister was uh, the late Dr. Milton Obote. One was 36, another one 35. But the subsequent turmoil in politics, if it was a question of age, then we wouldn't have had that turmoil. Mm. Now, even in our own case, in 86, when we took power, I was 28 when I became the commander of the army. Most mm. of these yeah, generals right. that uh, mm. you see now in, 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 in government, most of them were under 35, the majority of them. 70% were actually mm. under 35. What has changed in so our if politics age, from then if until age now? If was the only factor, mm. then we wouldn't have messed up this country. Mm. So You age, understand that every time age, you, you give us that must history. must be twinned mm. with character. Every time you give us that history, yes. it, it's like you are triggering the young people in, yes. in, in realizing that uh, they have been left out. Yeah, you, you, you see... Once the young people now recognize that power requires the exercise of responsibility in managing it, and they add it on to age, then for the first time we would have had a possibility of having a breakthrough out of the vicious cycle. Yes. The two are very, very critical because exercising responsibility or having character has nothing to do with age. Because as, I, you as I've indicated before, honestly speaking, you, you mm. can be a, a thief mm. at 80, you can be a thief at 30, mm. you can be a thief at 50, you can be a thief very at true, 80. Very true. And but if you do a scanning in this current regime, mm. you see across all those age groups, people who are thieves. Very but true. you can also have other people who are honest across those age groups. So the question in as far as I'm concerned is how do you get people of different age groups, different gender, different religions, different ethnic groups who congregate together mm. and form a core of people who believe in integrity, in honesty, in transparency, in justice, in fairness. Mm. The moment you achieve that, definitely will have a breakthrough. General Muntu, what gives you the confidence that you will garner the numbers that you want come 2021? The, the fact that the demographies have alternated, they have changed from... Uh, the, that age group yes. to young people, yes. they, they, they make the comprise of the biggest numbers. What gives you the confidence yes. that you get the numbers come 2020? We'll keep communicating because I suspect. Well, what do you I have do, in I your don't store? Suspect, what do you have in your basket? For I the don't young suspect. I know for sure that across all age groups, there are people who listen, that there are people who are able to understand reason, that there are people who are logical. Mm. And our hope is that those who are able to understand reason, those who are able to understand that, you know what, the problem we are confronted with is a problem of bad governance, that the problem we are confronted with, the problem of corruption, of dishonesty, of injustices, and therefore to know that the solution is to be something different from what is happening. We believe that once that, well, I, I, I suspect that from what I hear, the message we keep pushing resonates with the people across different age groups. Because if we want fairness, then we must have people who are fair. Absolutely. If we want justice, we must have people who are just. Mm -hmm. If we want to fight corruption, we must have people who want to exercise power in a transparent way. Mm -hmm. So we would have to be looking for those who have got that character to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and they are not restricted to age, they are not restricted to ethnicity, they are not restricted to religion. That's the only formula. Any political organization that will make a breakthrough that can turn around the fortunes of this country mm. must be a political party that has a concentration Very of true. people mm. of that of those categories mm. Mm. coming together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do, do so I have no problem with the, the largest population population. being mm. young mm. because it is a, a big plus mm. in terms of uh, how they can invest their energies, 
in the development as, process as we move and away shaping from, the future. As we move away from that, from the yes. demographies yes. Uh, yes. changing into yes. young people yes. holding the biggest number of yes. ballot, yes. Um, don't you think it's time that you would be at least backing someone a little bit younger for an enthusiastic service, stronger service, and you mentor them and nurture them into being the president of the Republic That's, that's of what we are doing actually in the Alliance for National Transformation, deliberately, consciously, in a focused way. That's why we are try, uh, attracting young people, middle-aged people, old people, men and women okay. who already subscribe the values because we are a value-driven organization. Mm. And therefore, the moment you train more and more and they have, have a set of people who subscribe those values and across generations, mm. then we have certainty that where we are heading, that our future is going to be guaranteed and it's going to be good. Absolutely. Yes. No, a, 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 a wise man once said yes. uh, that uh, if you want to predict the future or determine the future of that, you look at the history. Your history, General Muntu, uh, has been a little bit um, uh, maybe misunderstood. I don't know how you'd uh, interpret it yourself. Um, but um, to many people, you have been double-sided. This uh, looking at your history with... Uh, yes. Uh, the former president of the Republic of Uganda, yes. Milton Oboti, yes. and what relationship your dad, yes. Muntu Oyera, yes. uh, uh, had with, yes. Uh, yes. With, with the president, yes. but also having served with uh, General Yoweri Museveni yes. and um, have had that relationship. Uh, many have looked at you as a mole. <laughs> well, I've heard that, but I never get bothered. I never get derailed by what people say. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be concerned if I lost track of the things I believe in. Because internally you would know, if you are someone who believes, for example, in honesty, the moment you do something dishonest, there is something that would trigger in your mind, I know that you've gone wrong. If you don't correct uh, direction and go back on the right path, that's what would worry me. I, I never get worried about what people say. Because at the end of the day, in, in, in life, if you are focused on something, and if it is good and it is... Uh, uh, right, uh, something that you need to do, to do, and it is the benefit of society. The more you focus on it, the more you remain consistent in pursuing it. Eventually, it will happen. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I never get bothered by people what people say, because I know that time eventually absorbs you. If what you are doing is right, if you're on the correct path, there's nothing under the sun that will stop you achieving that objective. Do you have any relationship with the incumbent president of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Museveni? A relationship in what sense? In any sense whatsoever. Well, there's no biological relationship. Mm -hmm. The only relationship we had politically was uh, when we thought that we all subscribed the same values, but the moment we found that uh, he had uh, fallen short of the values that we subscribed to, that's what led to our separation. Because I've, as I've indicated uh, a number of times before, it is not the person of General Seven that we are following. It is the values that we thought he subscribed to that had become the link point between me, at least, and him. So the moment I found that he had lost direction in regard to that, I continued with the values that I believed in, and he remained where he has remained, and that's where he is now. Mm. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, General Muntu. Let, let's now look at um, Uganda's um, opposition political parties. Um, and organizations. Uh, we've seen currently uh, defections, shopping from one party to another, movement from one party to another, DP, NOOP, uh, UPC, name it. Yeah. We've seen movements. Yeah. What do they make? How do you interpret them? Two, two, two aspects. One, I think people should be free to exercise their rights of choice, wherever anybody wants to go, whatever motivates them, because we are motivated different. Mm -hmm. There are people who uh, are motivated, for example, like those of us who are in NT, our main motivation is being uh, value driven. So if you find that there is a party that you want to go into and you believe that uh, it has an environment within it and uh, what it pursues is consistent with what you believe in, then you join that party. Mm -hmm. But there may be some who are motivated more by how do I take a position? How do I easily get into parliament? How can I become a C5? And therefore, they factor it in whatever, in the considerations on how to uh, position themselves. And that's why right now you find there are so many candidates on the NRM ticket. Mm. 
60-70% mm -hmm. of them don't believe even in the uh, uh, principles and objectives of yeah. the movement, yeah. or at least the practices. I yeah. bump into so many. Mm -hmm. But they believe that that's the only area where they can go and they're able to take whatever positions they are focusing on. So what, there are all those kinds of what considerations. What do you think inspires that? Uh, is it, uh, are they following the monies? Are they following uh, they are, strength they are, they are, in terms I of numbers? They are, it's, it's a, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, but in the process of growth mm. of all of us, there are people who are fully formed and you find that they subscribe to values that uh, would uh, advance them, but also advance society. Absolutely. The others who, in the process of growth, uh, whatever environment they grow up in, they are malformed. You find that people would be able to do things mm. which do not necessarily advance society, but it will advance them as individuals. Mm. 